and uh, they also had, uh, and this is a fun part, their yearly uh, convention, which had uh, an auction of uh, the original artworks and the prototypes, which uh, drew people from around the country. Now, uh, I started collecting these at the age of seven, and so <laughs> I'm basically uh, there uh, with uh, all these adults, and uh, by the time I was 11, I was a club member, and I was bidding on the bottles myself at the auction, <laughs> uh, even though I'm not even old enough to drink. <laughs> and uh, th these get-togethers were uh, a lot of fun. Now, you got to know uh, bottle collectors from around the uh, nation, and uh, afterward, you get treated to a fine bear and a beef supper upstairs at Foss, and uh, lots of fun. And in 1985, they even held a, a decanter derby out in the parking lot where a running man or a woman could, in 15 seconds, grab as many decanter boxes off a set of tables as you could and reach the finish line. And uh, now, could you see what might go wrong with this? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that it is a highly entertaining event that sometimes resulted in broken porcelain all over the ground. Uh, Though uh, Heine Foss and uh, Boots uh, Frithoff, they uh, wised up. They just grabbed one of the tables uh, full of the bottles and just toted it across the finish line. Uh, I was uh, much smaller <laughs> than anyone else. I uh, wisely opted for the alternate option of simply uh, picking one and you get to take it home. Uh, and uh, such uh, got me involved with this. Uh, over time, uh, I got to know... Uh, folks uh, behind the scenes, including their longtime leader, uh, Steve Brayton, whose uh, autograph is on the uh, base of the Bald Eagle family there, and uh, other Foss uh, folks. And uh, these are uh, what the auction catalogs uh, looked like that they sent out to people, and it shows you in advance what all <laughs> was uh, in them. And uh, Allows you to pick and choose, though, as always with any auction, there are the dynamics of the auction day, which uh, you got to <laughs> uh, work uh, and judge on the fly as to uh, what you want to get. And uh, there are some which I uh, got at the auction that are here now. Uh, over here is the one I got at the age of nine. That I, I believe that's, uh, no, I think at 11. That, that's uh, the Ringmaster, which is actually one of only two of the circus ones that were sold, so it's very fortunate. Uh, and uh, the walrus uh, up there, and uh, th that one is special because that's one where I originally uh, saw, I first saw that design when Barbara Foss was sculpting it herself uh, at the house. Yeah, Barbara, uh, she uh, was a gifted artist, and it really showed in her work. Uh, this uh, top shelf, these are all uh, designs of Barbara Foss, as is the rainbow dancer uh, over there, and the basket dancer and deer dancer there. And uh, her decanters were uh, not made from paintings. She uh, uh, did them from clay sculptures that she uh, made in her studio, which was in the south room uh, the main floor of the Foss home. And uh, like I said, during uh, one of those visits, I saw a small walrus being made. Uh, the usually uh, she uh, made uh, other forms of designs and uh, she was best known for her ceremonial dancer series. And uh, that's what the deer dancer and the rainbow and the uh, basket dancer, that, what they're part of. And uh, these uh, don't depict any uh, specific tribe uh, what they're meant to do is to convey the general feeling and ritual of the dances and the important role they uh, played in the lives of American Indians. And uh, she also did other subjects, uh, such as the barrel racer here. And that one was really difficult to make. Uh, it required a uh, special team of artists and craftsmen uh, to be able to make this into a uh, production reality. And uh, that wasn't even the hardest uh, ski country decanter uh, produced. Uh, uh, the most challenging of them all uh, is right here. That's uh, the Aaron's Fox uh, fire engine. And uh, that one uh, uh, produced uh, uh, many difficulties uh, for the uh, manufacturer with all its intricate parts 
and uh, detachable waders and hoses and more, but they uh, did get off around 600 of them. And they tend to have various color combinations and uh, see where the stopper is on that one at all? <laughs> it's, uh, it's the, uh, uh, thing at the uh, front of the uh, truck. <laughs> yeah, after a number of years, though during the 1990s, the decanter industry faded and ski country faded along with it. The brand was eventually sold off. Uh, though Foss itself did uh, produce at least two duck decanters uh, for Beam, which I also pay attention to as having been Golden Productions. And uh, Nowadays, I collect these, uh, both because they're neat works of art and to preserve uh, prototypes and productions of them for the Golden community, and hopefully get chances to share them. And uh, one day, I hope they're in a museum. I think they belong in a museum. <laughs> uh, they're an important part of Golden's history. And like I said, just because they're a more recent part of it, it does not make them any less important. And uh, you see some of the rarest and best pieces here now. And uh, if you want to see uh, more, uh, just uh, glance by our office at 805 uh, 13th Street uh, from time to time and uh, you'll find them. And uh, that does it for the uh, talk on decanters.